Mrs. Dix and I both enjoy Terra. Or, okay, let me rephrase that. Mrs. Dix and I both enjoyed Terra. Past tense. I played Terra back when you had to pay to play it. I was one of the OG founders. I got that awesome title and everything once it converted to a free-to-play game. So it's safe to say that I am a very, very large fan of the game. To date, Terra still has some of the best true action combat that I have ever played through, and although it's become more evidently dated over time, I still can't help but enjoy it whenever I go back to it. Mrs. Dix actually played this as her main MMO for the entirety of, like, 2016, I think, before her and I got together. So we were both curious how Terra held up in 2019. Were we both wearing nostalgia goggles, or is the game still a good MMORPG to play this year? Let's talk about that. These are my thoughts and impressions on the way to level 64, I think, maybe 65-ish. Terra is one of the few true action combat MMORPGs currently available. It was released in North America back in 2012 as a pay-to-play MMORPG, but shortly after released as a freemium title offering premium benefits while going completely free to play. In 2013, after going free-to-play, Terra had a total of approximately 1.4 million registered players. By 2017, Terra had over 26 million registered players worldwide, with almost 7 million of those players being from North America alone. After launching onto both the Xbox One and PS4, they accumulated over 2 million additional console players. Clearly, the game was a very large success, both on PC and console. There are several race and class options available in-game. Some classes are race and gender locked, which to date has frustrated countless players, but South Korea does love limiting our freedom in games. We have the human, Kastanic, a man, the race, not, not specifically like, like, you know, a random dude. The High Elf, Popori, Ellen, and finally the Baraka. The classes are pretty much what you'd expect out of any fantasy MMO. You have the Archer, Berserker, Brawler, Gunner, Lancer, Mystic, Ninja, Priest, Reaper, Slayer, Sorcerer, Valkyrie, and the Warrior. I have never really been all too fond of gender locking and find the whole situation with limiting exactly what we can play based off of what gender we're willing to play, uh, I guess a little silly. But as it again is South Korea and the gender lock in pretty much every MMO they push out, it's likely something that we're never going to get past. Once getting in game, you're given a lengthy tutorial of the game where they teach you how to move your character, how to hold left click, and reveal the secret arts of meditation. Or at least that's what I tell people when they ask why I fell asleep. I get wanting to guide people through game mechanics, I do. But both the original tutorial island and even the new overhauled zone is completely unnecessary and redundant. If you've played an MMO, you know how to move. You know how to attack things. You know how to click skills, and you know how to talk to NPCs. Gating the game behind this tutorial is enough to not only bore, but also frustrate both new players and players looking to make ults. After the tutorial, which takes around 30 minutes on average, you're around level 10 and sent to the main city of Velika. There you continue with the story, and only the story because Terra has kind of truncated the leveling experience, meaning that you're capable of continuing while only pursuing the main story, leaving side quests completely meaningless. Upon reaching approximately level 20, you enter your first dungeon, one of several that you'll do on your way to max level. The dungeons are completely soloable, I'm not gonna lie here, especially as a gunner where I'd flip around like some kind of Twitch streamer that drank two liters of Red Bull before the fight. But parties are still nevertheless the route to take as they make for a much faster experience and allow for you to farm the dungeon for quick XP. This is ideal for leveling, I reckon. We grinded dungeons with the same people on occasion since they didn't really want to leave the party and got some absolutely great levels. By the time we had hit around level 65-ish, we came to the realization that they had patched in a level cap increase all the way to level 70. We were excited as we were under the impression that that just meant lots of new content was on the way to level 70, but we were mistaken. Instead, what we had was an increase in level without any real content. Some quests, a new world boss system, and that was it. There was no real way of obtaining level 70 that wasn't an arduous grind. And at the time, there was no actual purpose to hitting level 70 other than just, like, being level 70, I guess. This is made very apparent when you visit either the Terra forums or the Terra subreddit. It was at this point that we decided that we were just going to kind of stop there. There were several reasons behind this choice. First, and most importantly, we had tried queuing for dungeons around the level 64 to 65 range. 
upon entering, I personally was greeted with serious toxicity on more than one occasion. I was kicked from a dungeon in specific because my gear wasn't up to their standards while leveling. Another time I was kicked because I just didn't know mechanics for the dungeon I was doing, again, for the first time and while leveling. Just things like that. I mean, how are we supposed to get experience if we don't get in there and obtain experience through doing it? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Then uh, we, you know, kind of expected PvP to at the very least be possible, but PvP was completely dead. We tried queuing at all times of the day, but we could just never get a queue to pop. This led us to believe that PvP is pretty much dead. And looking at both the forums and the subreddit once again, that is a commonly reoccurring thought. Terra was once a damn good game, but there has been so much content pruned over the last couple years, we've lost hundreds of quests, had entire zones altered, dungeons nerfed into the ground. So much has changed to make this game more casual friendly that it killed what made the game enjoyable. That and over time the game is becoming more and more pay to win, which wasn't really very prevalent when I played years ago, but is definitely evident now. The dungeons used to be a lot of fun, granted they were never really all that difficult as opposed to other games in the genre, but that didn't mean that they didn't require effort and coordination. Now you get people running in Sansa Healer just YOLOing stuff because the difficulty is no longer there. The world, the combat, the story... Okay, well, the story was never really as intricately weaved within the world like something like Guild Wars 2 or Final Fantasy 14, but the story has become a convoluted mess. The world that is still currently beautiful and was once filled with players and content is now desolate. You don't see anyone outside of the cities. My wife and I played for, I think, about a month or two, spending several hours per week at varying times of the day, and we never encountered anyone. It was a ghost town outside the safe zones. Cause I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. The removal of side quests has left questing so, I don't know, I guess linear as there is no longer a sense of exploration. Like you don't really need to go out and venture in search of quests to continue leveling. You just continue the main story and you never look back. The only thing I believe that could make leveling worse is if it were auto pathing me to every objective. But really when I have auto run keybound and just sit on my phone because I don't really need to pay attention, is there any difference? Thankfully, the combat is still very highly enjoyable, at least as a gunner. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have done with myself, let alone the game. I just, I cannot fathom how a game that was as well received as Terra was and has survived as long as Terra has is in the situation it's currently in. One thing I do know is that the game is on its last legs. If nothing is done, the game will soon join the MMO graveyard. Who knows, maybe Gamego will buy it out. <laughs> Great. So, is Terra worth playing in 2019? There are a lot of good aspects of the game, but they are vastly outnumbered by the negative. I have been a supporter of Terra ever since it was pay to play. I've included it in various top 10 videos, always talking highly about its combat and its graphics. I've done absolutely everything I possibly could to continue to drive people to the game. I've done dedicated videos on it, I've done live streams of it, but in its current form, I can no longer endorse it. I don't believe that right now it is worth investing any time into as a new player, nor do I believe that it's worth returning to as an old player. My wife, who has played the game for twice as long as I have and participated in endgame dungeons and raiding, has a pretty much a similar sentiment. The game isn't ruined in its entirety, but the developers just don't really seem to understand what we want out of the game and continue digging a hole for the game. There are a lot of improvements that need to be made before Terra is capable of being seen as a competent MMO in this day and age, but I highly doubt that that'll ever happen. All we can do is reminisce on what was once an amazing, highly addicting, entertaining MMORPG.
But that's just my opinion, my final impressions of the game in 2019. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Do you enjoy it? Will you try it out or do you even want to? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Dead.